I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer for Gold Derby, and I'm joined today by William Stanford Davis, who plays Mr. Johnson on Out Elementary. And, you know, Sam, before we get into uh, season three, I kind of want to go back all the way to the beginning, because I read an interview with yours in which you talked about filming a scene in the pilot with all the teachers in the library where you kind of delivered a cue and you had the feeling kind of for the first time in your career, I believe, that people were really taking notice of you. So could you take me back to that moment and talk about how that formed the relationship you would then go on to have with this show, with this cast, with this character and so on? The only, the only one of the other cast members I knew was Cheryl. Uh, mm -hmm. I worked with Ray Donovan. And, you know, when you come in as a guest star, you come in, like I said, you, you know, you just want to hit your mark, say your line, knock over the furniture and just be a good guest, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what I was concentrating on when I delivered the line that she's got some big feet. <laughs> Everyone in the room turned around. It's like they didn't know I was there, you know, and they, oh my God, where did this guy come from? And we all in that particular scene felt like the show was something special, but you know, a lot of shows, you feel like they're special, but they never see the light of day. And for some, I had some type of feeling that, okay, man, this, this may be okay for you, but I still didn't know that I would become a series regular at that point. But, uh, uh, but that's the beginning. That's when I felt like uh, not only did the cast take, take notice, but when mm -hmm. they actually saw the, uh, when they actually saw the, uh, uh, the pilot, that everyone was like, oh, wow, who is this guy? You know? <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that also kind of speaks to, and you've talked about this before, how well the show does treat its guest stars, right? Because like you said, in season one, you were uh, you appeared in recurring uh, fashion. Um, right. But I just love how every character that comes in on this show is treated with equal respect. And I think exactly. that kind of creates the show's character, doesn't it? It, it really does. Uh, and the first, like I said, it's the most loving, giving, and generous set I've ever worked on. So, so when guest stars come, they're, they're treated like series regulars. I don't care if mm -hmm. they're just a day guest, a day player, or if it's uh, Bradley Cooper, you know, right. uh, they come in and they just are really treated like family. And that's one thing I like. That's the environment that Quinta has tried to create. Yeah, that's absolutely lovely. And, you know, something that I love about Mr. Johnson is that we, we don't know a whole lot about him. Um, we know that he loves conspiracies, that, you know, he doesn't believe in the moon or that he thinks the classrooms, except for Gregory's, are bugged. I mean, we know that, or he claims to have traveled the world, but, you know, we don't lo know a lot more beyond that. He doesn't, we don't even know his first name. But I like that because every time we do get new information about him, I feel like you pay extra attention to it. Um, okay. Yeah, but I'd be curious to hear from you, from the person who has to portray the character. Have you ever sought more information about him from the writers? Have you ever like created a backstory for him? Or has it kind of lent itself to your process to only know, you know, this tiny bit of information about him? It's been a combination of both. I've given him my thoughts about where he's been, where he's come from, his uh his personal private life. And uh we we'll hope to see more of that. Uh, I know the fans, uh, I've had a lot of fans on on uh, on social media where we want to see more of Mr. Johnson. And and the writers have taken that into consideration. In these last few episodes, you're going to see a little bit more of Mr. Johnson, a little bit, a different side of him also, uh, which I think is going to be, uh, I don't want to give it away. Uh, I'll just of say course. you're going to see a different side of him. But yeah, we, we you know, I constantly offer and they constantly tell me when we, when we get to the table <laughs> read. And you see what this guy's got to do, what he's saying or what he's wearing or whatever. You go, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did they really put this in there? So, Yeah, because he really is such an eccentric character, right? And I always imagine <laughs> that playing an eccentric, like playing a character like that, <laughs> especially in a comedy, I always imagine that that's a very difficult job to do because... You want those eccentric qualities to be highlighted, right? You de definitely want to you want to respect those qualities, but at the same time, you still want there to be a character, right? You don't want those qualities to to overshadow them. And I always imagine that there is a version where those qualities kind of do overshadow the character and where they kind of become the character in a way. You know, is that a tightrope that you would say you're walking on the show when you're playing Mr. Johnson, or is that not something you necessarily think about when you're playing? No, you think. I think every actor wants to make their character as honest, three-dimensional mm. as possible. Mm. I don't ever want to make him a cartoon or just some uh, just comedy little soundbite that pops in and pops out. Exactly. I try to put honesty in him. 
I, I based this character on a lot of people that I've met or, or known in my life, including including some family members. Mm -hmm. uh, his reality. And I think the people like him, I've seen people like them, they are real oh, people, yeah. I think, and, and that their opinion matters just like anyone else's. And they'll, they'll say it loud. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, him not having much of a filter is just so, it's so refreshing to see, right? Um, I, I think that. a lot I of- I love that he's filterless. Thank you. I love that he's yeah. filterless. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm sure a lot of people watch and are like, oh, I wish I could be like that. Right. But because he's he's also in a specific position, you know, he's been at that school for a long time. Right. Um, that's a different position than someone like Janine, who's just arrived there, basically, or or Gregory's, you know, someone who these people who are, you, you know, younger and are kind of new in this, this environment, in this particular environment, they they can't get a, get away with that. And Mr. Johnson can get away with that type of behavior for the lack of a better. So he I knows more about the school. He knows more about the school than anyone. The only person mm -hmm. I think Mr. Johnson has any fear of, <laughs> that might just be a tiny bit, is Barbara Howard. She's probably oh, yeah. been there as long as him, or maybe just a little longer than him. But this man has been all over the world. He's worked, and he's, uh, you know, a job is a job, you know, but mm -hmm. I think he cares about what he does here. And that's yeah. what I try to I bring. I try to bring that to the character uh, every week. Yeah, and it, and it really comes through. And that kind of takes me to my next question because something that we do know about him is that he loves to keep everyone at Abbott on their toes. Um, yeah. And it, what's really great to see is that he really has a different relationship with each of the uh, each of the teachers or each of the staff members. Like you okay. said, you, you can tell that Melissa and Barbara are kind of the people he respects the most, whereas you've talked about how Ava is kind of his like partner in crime. So yeah, I'd be curious to hear from you with which character you would say his relationship has changed the most over the course of these three seasons and and why has it changed? Um, that's a real good question, man, because I have, like you said, different relationships with all of them. Mm -hmm. My relationship with the guys, both Gregory Eddy and, and Jacob, yeah. uh, I think that's evolved more than anything. Uh, I mean, we're, you know, there's, there's this thing where I say, you know, I thought we were the three musketeers. We're the only guys in the whole thing. We're, let's stick together. So it's evolved, but you know, it's only evolved so much because Mr. Johnson still is Mr. Johnson. He's not going to yep. let them just, you know, run over him. You know what I mean? But uh, not just run over me. He, he's still very opinionated. And mm -hmm. but the man is such an enigma. He will give you the last dime in his pocket, I think, you know, uh, as, he, as he's giving it to you, he might try to cut your hand off. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, uh, but that's the type of guy he is. You know, I think he's. I think he's honest and generous and uh, says what's on his mind. But back to your original question, I think he's evolved more with the two guys. I think you're going to see a slow evolution with his relationship with Janine. Hmm. Without giving anything away or anything, I think that in the coming season, you will see a little bit more of that. I don't know what that's going to look like, <laughs> but uh, I think you will see a little bit more of that. Yeah, and I feel like we might have gotten a hint of that in in the most recent episode with his uh, with his little rope uh, strand. Uh, <laughs> I like I like that. Yeah, yeah. But I love that you mentioned uh, Jacob and Gregory because I actually wanted to focus on those specific dynamics because um, with with Jacob we get we, we get to see a softer side of Mr. Johnson this season in the seventh episode. Uh, you know right. when he's kind of saddened by this growing companionship between uh, Jacob and Melissa. Um, because you you start to see he kind of he doesn't like being excluded right he likes he likes to be you know he likes to be in the loop and he starts realizing that he's kind of being ex excluded from everything right, and, right. yeah and I've always found that relationship personally to be kind between Jacob and Mr. Johnson to be kind of part fraternal part adversarial and I'd be curious to hear from you whether you would describe it, their dynamic like that and what do you think it is about Jacob that Mr. Johnson or that draws Mr. Johnson to him so much. Um, I think, you know, as an actor, you make all types of choices. Uh, I have a relative like Jacob that I care a lot about. And so I try to use that, you know, in, in my work with him. Um, I learn a lot from Jacob and from from, from Gregory. At, at me stand now, you know, I'm, I'm really bad with one of these things. I'm really bad with yeah. the people. And th there's a scene where we're in, in the uh, teacher's lounge and he and, and uh, Melissa are texting one another. And I know all the hip jargon, you know, you're, you're memes and, and you, you know, you're doing this to each other. And, and I understand what's going on. And mm -hmm. not only am I infuriated, 
But like you said, I feel very left out. I feel very left out and, and I feel betrayed. Mm -hmm. Betray me this way, talking to me, behind, talking behind my back like this, you know. And so, you know, I, I try to have as much fun with it. But yeah, that that that's a uh that's what's happening. He he just feels like he's being left out. Yeah. And I feel like Jacob betrays him so many times this season. I mean, he was so hurt when Jacob responds to his newsletter about what was it, the history of spring cleaning uh, with with a, using a chatbot that upset him so much. <laughs> I'm heartbroken. I'm angry at him. Oh, man, what? You know? Oh, my God. Yeah, I feel very betrayed. And then when he really reads it and he he gives me, he pays me that honor, I'm like, see, see, you know, I'm you know, I, uh, more than a hat rack here. I know a little something. I've been places. Need to pay yeah. attention. You know, <laughs> absolutely. To quote him from season two, put some respect on my name. Put some respect <laughs> on my name. Yes, sir. Exactly. Exactly. And then with Gregory, I think that might be, in my opinion, sort of the most fascinating um, dynamic. So between Mr. Johnson and and Gregory, because and there are also so many tidbits um, this season that really help us understand that relationship because. In one of the episodes, uh, Mr. Johnson tells him, you know, think about where you, you'd be if it wasn't for me. And yeah. then after and then after that um, education panel that uh, Gregory takes part in, Mr. Johnson tells him that they're alike and that they're both kind of above all of this. Right. So what aspects of um, of himself does he does Mr. Johnson recognize in Gregory? And would you say that he is kind of protective of him, if that makes sense? Well, I think you remember back in season one when Gregory was really trying to find his way. And we sat down and, and I told him I worked all over the world. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think we created a bond then. In spite mm -hmm. of my eccentricities, I think he remembers that. And, and, and that's a part of me that he respects. Uh, my eccentricities. <laughs> you know, he, <laughs> he kind of he puts those on the back burner, so to speak. Oh, that's just him. He's on one today. But he really knows who I am. And that's kind of a relationship, not the, the, the crazy part, but Tyler and I have become good friends. And that makes playing this, like you said, walking this tightrope with him, because I do care about him. I do care about what they think, as I said, the three musketeers. Yeah. So there, there are two different types of relationships between uh, Jacob and Tyler that I have with each one, but I think they've grown out of a somewhat mutual respect. You know, this mm. guy's really crazy. This might be an act that he's, you know, maybe he's just pulling my leg. I don't know, but they do, they understand that he has some depth. Mm -hmm. you know, and he has a good heart. Yeah, absolutely. But all, but all the <laughs> with, with everything else. Yeah, I, I love that, you know, and we've kind of talked about, you know, some of the different characters and I must imagine for you, you know, each a character on this show is so distinctive and each right. actor brings such a distinctive energy to their character. And then as some, you know, because you get to sort of play off of each of these people, you're kind of receiving different energies from them, I must assume. And I'm interested to hear whether that keeps you on your toes, the fact that you're constantly receiving all these different, you know, energies from these actors. Talk about the process of working with them, because the show has such a specific style where everyone's just playing off of each other. And I must imagine that it's, you know, in one way, yes, really fun to receive and play off of the different energies, but it must also be kind of a challenge, right? It is a challenge, but it's written that in some of the, especially the scenes, like I say, either in the library or in the teacher's lounge, they're like, they got to move, they got to move. Yeah. And because you do have a different relation, at least I do. I mean, Gregory and Janine's character has the same relationship, you know, wherever mm -hmm. that's called, it's the same, you know. Yeah. Uh, 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 Melissa and Barbara have the same relationship. So, and, and Jacob and Melissa, but, you know, I'm dealing with six other people. And they're yeah. all different. And I got to deal with them. I got to know how to navigate through them. I know how to just, okay, I don't care what, what you think of me. So that's the way that, that I've tried to deal with all of them and make them all very, very specific. One of the things I've learned as an actor is everything you do in life is specific. You know, everything, yeah. you know, nothing is random. Whatever little thing, yeah, of course. whatever, everything is specific. So I try to deal with them all in a different way based on our relationships, based on the respect that I have for each one of them. And I respect them all because of what they're doing as teachers. Yeah. And and you kind of also mentioned like the dialogue, you know, the dialogue on this show is so specific. I talked to Randall Einhorn last week, director and executive producer, and we were kind of talking about how 
sometimes the dialogue um, kind of that has this really specific rhythm to it. It almost sounds lyrical in a way. And I, I kind of said, you know, if there's one person who misses a beat, the entire thing kind of risks falling apart. So yes, I'd be curious to hear from you. I mean, you're constantly in scenes where everyone's just playing off of each other, where everyone's just bouncing off of each other. Is that something that's become more easier, you know, as time has gone by, as you've, you know, done more episodes on this show? Or is that something where you came in and were like, okay, we all gel right away? Or is that kind of that, or did you have to develop a rapport first in order for that to sort of happen easily, if that makes sense? It's a combination. It, you know, it's, we understand what he wants and how he wants to do it. So mm. we all are up for that. We know, okay, it's got to hit, 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 hit. And, and sometimes it, it falls apart, but that's the way it is. You know, uh, some, <laughs> me, I'm notorious for, for <laughs> missing a beat or missing a line, you know, and we have to start over again, but that's because you want to make the rhythm. You want to keep it moving. You want to keep it moving. Uh, but um, it's, it, once again, it goes back to the writing. It goes back to yes. the writing. Writing is yeah. very, very specific. Yeah. And uh, Randall, oh, I love when Randall is directing. I love, you know, I love our guest directors also, but when Randall's directing, it's like music, man. It's like music. It's like, like you said, it's rhythmic, but it's really like music. And he he hears it. He says, uh, I have a theory. And usually the theory <laughs> works out very well. Oh, that's 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 great. And I mean, he was talking, he, he also teased, uh, he was talking about the finale and how, um, extraordinary the finale is and how different it is. I know you can't spoil anything about it, but is there anything that you can tease about the finale or any of the upcoming episodes? You've already teased a bit, but what is something that you're specifically looking forward to um, seeing in the viewer's reaction to those episodes? Well, wow, without spoiling anything, because I'm visualizing everything that's going on. Uh, everyone's in every scene. I can say that mm. just about everything. Every actor's in every scene. Uh, maybe one or two that they're not. But uh, it, I think there's going to be a lot of heart. A lot, man. It's really, really funny. It's really funny in my That's opinion. Great. And, and wow, I'm trying to tiptoe around this without giving away anything. <laughs> without spoilers. Uh, I, I think you're going to see a different, a slightly different side of, of uh, Mr. Johnson, something that no one expects uh and man that's all i can say without really you know, yeah I know, I know you're trying to <laughs> oh don't <laughs> worry i don't want to get you in trouble of course <laughs> not but uh but it's very funny i, I think it i think all of the episodes have heart just based on yeah the message that we're doing you know the message that we're sending about teachers but this does not take place in the school at all yeah and i, and uh -huh. I actually that you know yeah that's <laughs> a fan <laughs> yeah, no, that's a fantastic tease. And, you know, you, you also kind of mentioned some of the things you're hoping to see with Mr. Johnson, right? You talked about his relationship uh, with Janine, that you're hopefully we might see that explored a bit more in future seasons. And kind of on a final note, um, we obviously trust the writers uh, and we uh, whatever they're going to cook up for Mr. Johnson is going to be, you know, in the upcoming season, or upcoming seasons is going to be great. Um, but is there anything that you would like to see from him? Is there anything that you would like to see him do? Is there any person you would like to see him interact with? Is there a dynamic you would like to see explored more? And um, what are your specific wishes for him for the upcoming uh, season? To sort of wrap I'd like up. to see more of his, of his of his personal life away from the from the school. Does this mm -hmm. man have a family? Does he have a love interest? Yeah. Uh, um, what does he do? I know in the beginning we established that he's an avid fisherman who loves to fish. Right. That's his. Uh, that's his kind of uh, getaway and his his me time. So I think that they're going to get into more of those type of situations with him. Um, and I think you'll see more of his. He'll have more of a, not personal, but a more uh, extensive relationship with everyone. You'll you'll see more of his relationship with Barbara. You know, even though Barbara is, he tiptoes around her a lot. She speaks her mind to him, but I think that you'll see more of that, uh, of a more personal type of relationship. You know, yeah, uh, with Barbara, I think each one of them, I think we've established something with all of them. Like, you know, I have a relationship with Absolutely. Melissa. We like to gamble. We like, you know, we, we, we have a, we think the same way about a lot of things. And, <laughs> 
said Ava's my partner in crime, but I think you haven't seen much of a relationship with Barbara. You haven't seen much of a relationship yeah. with Janine. I think you're going to see more of those. I think you're going to see that evolve a little more. And that's the great thing about uh, TV series, TV series with multiple seasons, is they allow for relationships to be explored. So, Thank um, God for I, multiple seasons. <laughs> Thank exactly, you. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, and we, I can't wait to see all those different dynamics uh, fleshed out and explored. And I can't wait to see what we see from Mr. Johnson, uh, you know, this season and in upcoming season, so upcoming seasons. Um, Stan, thank you so, so much for uh, talking about the show today, for talking about Mr. Johnson. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having me.